الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن استنى بسنته بإحساننا يوم الدين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome you to another session from the commentary of the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawi رحم الله and now we're going to look at hadith number 37 the recording of deeds another yet very important hadith in this collection. Now let's go to the recital of this hadith. An ibn Abbas wa da'anhuma an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ma yarwihi an rabbihi tabaraka wa ta'ala qal inna allaha katab al-hasanati wa sayyiat thumma bayyanna thalik faman hamma bi hasanatin falam ya'malha katabaha allahu indahu hasanatan kamila wa in hamma biha fa'amaliha katabaha allahu indahu ashara Hasanatin ila sabimiati ضعفن الى اضعاف كثيره وان هم بسيئه فلم يعملها كتبها الله عنده حسنه كامله وان هم بها فعملها كتبها الله سيئه واحده رواه البخاري ومسلم في صحيحيهما بهذا الحروف فانظر يا اخي وفقنا الله واياك الى عظيم لطف الله تعالى وتأمل هذه الألفاظ وقوله عنده إشارة إلى الاعتناء بها وقوله كلمة لتأكيد وشدة الاعتناء بها وقال في سيئة التي هم بها ثم تركها كتبها الله عنده حسنة كاملة فأكدها بكلمة وإن عملها كتبها سيئة واحدة فأكدها تقليلها بواحدة ولم يؤكدها ب كاملة فلله الحمد ومنة سبحانه لا نحصي ثناء عليه وبالله التوفيق ابن عباس رضى عنهما reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم related from his Lord glorified and exalted be he indeed Allah has recorded the good deeds and the evil deeds then he clarified that whosoever intends to do a good deed but does not do it Allah records it with himself as a complete good deed. But if he intends it and he does it, then Allah records it with himself as 10 good deeds up to 700 times or more than that. But if he intends to do an evil deed and does not do it, Allah records it with himself as a complete deed. But if he intends it and does it, Allah records it down as one evil deed. And this is related by Al-Bukhari Muslim in these words. And Imam al-Nawi continues with further explanation of this hadith. He says, Look, my brother, may Allah help us and take note of how great is the kindness of Allah. May He be exalted. Reflect on this. How that His saying with Himself points to His great care with regard to it. And His saying complete is for emphasis not to point to the intensity of His care in regard to it. With regard to the evil deed which one intended but then abandoned, he says Allah records it with himself as a complete deed, emphasizing this by the word kamila or complete. Whereas if he performs it, he only records it down as one evil deed, whereby the word one. He emphasizes it being made little of since he does not emphasize it here by the word complete. So to Allah be all praise and grace. Glory be to him. Our praises to Him we cannot count, and with Allah is success. Muqaddimah. So let's go to the introduction or the Muqaddimah of this beautiful hadith. And the first thing that you would realize is that this hadith is Qudsi. And this is by virtue of the narrator Ibn Abbas wa Anhuma. He's saying, Fi ma yarwihi ar rabbihi tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this infers that this Nawi Hadith is a Qudsi Hadith, Ya'ni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this statement. And this Hadith begins with, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَبَ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ ثُمَّ بَيَّنَّ ذَلِكَ So there are actually other versions of this Hadith. 
that have been recorded also by Bukhari and Muslim in the same form of Hadith Qudsi, but where the Qudsi is more clearly apparent. One of these is the following version that has been commented upon by Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, rahimahullah. Where the Prophet ﷺ says, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ إِذَا رَعَدَ عَبْدِي أَنْ يَعْمَلَ سَيِّئَةً فَلَا تَكْتُبُوهَا عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَعْمَلَهَا فَإِنْ عَمَلِهَا فَاكْتُبُوهَا بِمِثْلِهَا وَإِنْ تَرَكَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِي فَاكْتُبُوهَا لَهُ حَسَنَةً وَإِذَا رَعَدَ أَنْ يَعْمَلَ حَسَنَةً فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا فَاكْتُبُوهَا لَهُ حَسَنَةً فَإِنْ عَمَلِهَا فَاكْتُبُوهَا لَهُ بِعُشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَّا سَبِيْمِيَا Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Allah says, if my slave intends to do a bad deed, then, O angels, do not write it unless he does it. If he does it, then write it as it is. But if he refrains from doing it for my sake, then write it as a good deed. If he intends to do a good deed, but does not do it, then write a good deed. And if he does it, then write for him as 10 good deeds up to 700 times. And this is narrated by Abu Huraira in Al-Bukhari, and there's a similar version also with the same wording in Sahih Muslim. Going further in explanation of this beautiful hadith, to add to what Imam Nawi already mentioned regarding the beautiful aspects in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and generosity of rewarding us with good deeds and trying to limit the evil aspect of our bad deeds. Okay. Number one, the topic of intention of a good deed without its execution or performance. So, Rasul Sussam continues, Allah Subhanahu wa says in this hadith, فَمَنْ حَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَّبَهُ اللَّهُ إِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا Then the one who intends a good deed but then does not do it, is not able to do it, then Allah writes for him, with himself, one complete deed. So we have discussed that if a Muslim intends to do a good deed, along with a strong determination to do it, then it will be surely recorded as if the person, the Muslim, or he or she has done it. And this is important to note, but this, this still does not compensate for the obligation of doing a good deed when there is an opportunity to do so. Okay, so it's important to understand that aspect as well. But when the opportunity is not manifest and an intention is certainly made, like a strong intention, and there's a decision to do that action, that good deed, then the good deed will be recorded. Okay, and some of this is, as mentioned by Imam Ibn Rajab, include the following actions or the following intentions. If someone, for example, has intended to wake up in the middle of the night to perform the night prayer, but failed to do so because he overslept, then, inshallah, he will be or she will be rewarded for that action. Furthermore, if someone intended to pray or fast, right, but could not do so, then also that is rewarded. If someone, for example, made every effort to do jihad or umrah, but could not do so, then that's also going to be rewarded, and the same for hajj as well. So well, this hadith mentions actually four types of deeds. Okay. Number one, performing one good deed results in multiplication of rewards equal to ten or more good deeds. Number two, performing one evil deed results in a sin equal to that of one evil deed or action. Okay. Having the intention of doing a good deed, however, results in the reward of that respective action, despite not doing so. Contrary to this, having the intention of doing a bad deed, but withholding oneself from committing it, results actually in the reward of a good deed, subhanAllah. Again, the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's important to note that this classification of deeds is a general one and may not apply to all deeds as we will discuss also soon in this session or this dars. So now going to the next topic which talks about the multiplication of reward for good deeds. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith Qudsi, وَإِنْ حَمَّ بِهَا فَعَمَلِهَا كَتَبَهَا اللَّهُ إِنْدَهُ عَشْرَ حَسَنَاتٍ إِلَى سَبِمِيَةٍ وَضَعْفٍ إِلَى أَضْعَافٍ كَثِيرًا okay. And if he intends to do an action and does it, then Allah writes with himself 10 good deeds to 700 good deeds to even more than that. So the multiplication 
of good deeds from a single good deed as opposed to that of a bad deed is something which is a well-known principle in our deen and again denotes the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot forget that for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in surah al-an'am ayah 160 وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Allah says, Whoever shall come before Allah with a good deed will gain ten times the like thereof. But whoever shall come with an evil deed will be requited with no more than the like thereof. And they will not be wronged. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Baqarah, <laughs> Who is it that would loan Allah a goodly loan so that He may multiply it for Him? many times over. And it is Allah who withholds and grants abundance, and to Him you will be returned. Okay. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in Surah Baqarah also, in Ayah 261, the following. The example of those who spend their wealth fi sabila in the path of Allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies His reward from whomever He wills. And Allah is all-encompassing and knowing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa, Ayah 40, Indeed, Allah does not do injustice even as much as a mustard seed's weight. Why, if there is a good deed, He multiplies it and gives from Himself a great reward. So thus from these many ayat of the Qur'an Kareem and even more, we cannot forget the unparalleled mercy and generosity of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now let's turn to the next topic and benefit from this hadith. And we looked at this in a previous hadith as well, like for example the interpretation on what is niya, what counts as intention. So let us remind ourselves from the discussion from that hadith because this is very relevant to this hadith as well. But there are different grades of thought and tension and how they relate to the term hum in this hadith. Being familiar with the scope of these terms gives a better in-depth understanding of this hadith. And this is very important as well because all of us should know exactly how our niyyah connects with the deed. Okay. And the importance of niyyah or intention has already been highlighted again from that hadith. in al-a'malu bin and we saw that intention or niyyah consists of both the desire and also a willingness to do an action. In this hadith, the word ham refers to intention, okay, like niyyah. It can further be defined as lexically in the Arabic dictionary as intending, proposing, or desiring an action or a determination to do so. Thus, in Islam, intention does not merely refer to the fleeting thought of doing something. So there are three categories of thoughts that come into the mind and the heart in which a person is not liable for sin. Just know that. Okay, so not everything that we think about or comes into our mind, we are responsible for. So what are those things which we will be excused for if, for example, there is an evil thing which comes in our brain or our mind or our heart? A fleeting thought that comes for an instant and leaves is termed hajjus. Hajjus. Whereas the thought that is considered or contemplated is termed khatir. 
Okay, the term khatir can include waswas or whispering. For example, waswas from the shaitan and the other evil elements from Iblis, okay, from an evil source or his squadron. Okay. A thought which is considered more in-depth than these two, but we are not liable for sin, is the speech to oneself or hadith nafs In this hadith, however, the term ham means intention coupled with determination. Ya'ni niya. Innama la'malu bin niyat. And this is here synonymous with ham. Okay. And it is this ham for which doing a good deed actually yields a reward. Okay. On the converse, a reward is also yielded if a person prevents himself from acting on harm or strong intention to do a bad deed. However, if a person does not prevent him or herself from harm, like a strong desire or strong niya, intention, and attempts to act on it despite being unsuccessful, then a sin will result. Even if the person is not successful in acting on that strong desire because there is that intention and the action was also made but because even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates our actions but again the person made that attempt to act but could not do so thus a sin will result and we we'll look at a particular hadith which clarifies this and puts this principle into action and we'll look at a hadith which exemplifies this principle we just looked at. Thus, it is important that this point from the interpretation of this hadith does not get lost. The Prophet ﷺ continues in this hadith Qudsi, he says, وَإِنْ حَمَّ بِسَيَّةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَّبَهَ اللَّهُ إِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا And if he intends to do an evil deed and does not do it, Allah records it with himself as a complete good deed. In another version of hadith, he says the following, okay. But if he refrains from doing it, the evil deed for my sake, and then write it as a good deed. And Ibn Rajab, he says that this refers to the part of the hadith regarding the one who has an intention to do the evil act, and is able to do it, but refrained from doing so for the sake and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was a strong niyyah, but he refrained from doing so because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other factor prevented him or her from carrying out that evil action. Thus, this person will be rewarded with the hasana because of refraining from doing that evil deed with its good intention. So, the intention was corrected. The intention was changed. But this really, in and of itself, is a good deed. Okay, so, this is exactly what explains this part of the hadith. Okay, because if you really have every intention to do a bad deed, and just are not able to carry it out or fulfill it because of qadr or other logistical reasons, then do not expect to be forgiven because that will be a burden of sin on that person. There are other ahadith which add perspective and clarify this fourth hadith statement. The Prophet wasallam says in a famous hadith, إِذَا الْتَقَ الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ فِي النَّارِ فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ هَذَا الْقَاتِلُ فَمَا بَالُ الْمَقْتُولِ قَالْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ هَرِيسًا عَلَىٰ قَتْلِ صَاحِبِهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, When two Muslims meet each other with their swords, both the murderer as well as the murdered will go to the hellfire. I said, O Messenger of Allah, it is alright for the murderer, but what about for the murdered one? Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi replied, He surely had the intention to kill his companion. This is narrated by Ahnaf bin Qais in Sahih al-Bukhari. So here this hadith details the case of a person who had every intention to perform that evil act and made the effort to do so, but was not able to perform it. Okay. The factors which prevented the person from doing the action, whether from lack of strength, skill, or fate, Qadr, here are irrelevant. So this person will be punished since he exerted himself in an attempt to do the action. I hope you see the point. Okay, so it's not just about, okay, not being able to carry out an evil action. Right? But you have to also change that niyyah so that you don't do it because of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
You had every intention to do so, but before you acted, you, you changed your niyyah. And that's what prevented you from doing the evil deed, and this is also what caused you to have a good hasana added to the scale versus a bad deed. And furthermore, the same ruling can be applied on one with a determination of doing an evil deed, but inability to do so because of other factors, as we just mentioned. Okay, so for example, if a person is about to break into a house or a car for the purpose of theft, but decides not to do so since there is a police car patrolling the area, then don't expect that person to be forgiven for that sin or that sin not be put on him. This person earned a sin for the same reason that is detailed just now, that they made the effort but did not do so because of fear of being punished in this dunya, not because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. What about someone who has the intention to perform an evil action but changes his mind before doing so? In this case, if his eagerness to do the evil has weakened or decreased or subsided, then this person also is excused as per Ibn Rajab. So that makes sense. Okay. So here is the intention to commit the sin. Here it is the intention to commit the sin that is considered as a transient thought or an incomplete intention since it lacked determination in the person's heart. Or perhaps this person had a fleeting thought to do evil but he disliked or repelled it. And often these fleeting thoughts are the wasfas of shaitan and they are beyond our control often. So that's why we have to continuously say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah does not charge a soul except within its capacity. So in either case, this person is excused since this does not represent a willingness to do evil. So we can also take the example of a fasting person in Ramadan who sees cool water and has a fleeting thought of breaking his fast to drink but refrains from doing so. So here the individual should be forgiven because the commissioning of the sin did not arise from his heart. However, this is not the case with a person who persists on intending to do an evil action, but does not execute it. Very important. So if the evil is an action of the limb, such as adultery, theft, murder, or like khamar, drinking of khamar, intoxicants, or drugs, then Ibn Rajab, for example, says that the persistent eagerness and willingness on doing an action, the evil action, will cause this person to be punished, even if he or she did not do it. So we have to be extremely careful. Extremely careful because in this society, we are surrounded with evil shahawat and desires to try to push us into committing a sin. Okay, they're all around us. The advertisements, the people, the culture. It's, it's crazy. And if a person is naive enough and not, doesn't have the taqwa and God-fearingness and is warped into desiring evil, and it does not stop him or herself, then it will earn sin. It will earn sin. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, but he imposes blame upon you for what your hearts have earned. And Allah is forgiving and forbearing. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 225. Okay. So those people who fantasize about evil, and scholars, for example, have said anyone who takes a glass of water and fantasizes that he is drinking khamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him as if he is drinking khamar because that desire is there with an action for what they could not do. So fantasizing evil is something which will earn us evil deeds. May Allah protect us from this type of ghafla, this type of heedlessness into desiring sin. Okay? Because it's not just about not being able to do it, but remember the heart, there's also actions to the heart as well. And part of that also is having that strong determination and that strong niya. Remember, the one who is just contemplating evil thoughts, this is just something which is just going to change his heart around. It's going to cause the heart to like evil, ma'adullah. 
If the person makes a statement with the tongue intending to do evil, then there is no doubt that he will earn a sin, the like of the evil. The Prophet Wasallam says in a long hadith, the world is only for four people or four persons. A slave whom Allah provides with wealth and knowledge so he has taqwa of his Lord with it, nurtures the ties of kinship with it, and he knows that Allah has a right in it. And so this is the most virtuous rank. And a slave whom Allah provides with knowledge, but he does not provide with wealth. So he has a truthful intent saying, if I had wealth, then I would do the deeds of so-and-so with it. So he has his intention, so their rewards are the same, subhanAllah. And a slave whom Allah provides with wealth, but does not provide him with knowledge, so he spends his wealth rashly without knowledge, nor having taqwa of his Lord, nor nurturing the ties of kingship, and he does not know that Allah has a right in it. So this is the most despicable rank. And a slave whom Allah does not provide with wealth nor knowledge, so he says, if I had wealth, then I would do the deeds of so-and-so with it. He has his intention, so their sin is the same. And this is narrated by Abu Khabsha al-Anmari in Jamia Tirmidhi, and created as Sahih by Imam Tirmidhi. So this hadith clarifies that the people who do not have the means, for example, of doing good or evil, and they have that strong intention to do so, then they also you know, get the reward of that as well. So we have to be very clear on this hadith as well. This talks about that strong desire, strong intention, and the one who perseverates on the good, like for example, the Sahaba who could not spend the wealth and they were so grieved at it and asked the Prophet the wealthy have taken all the good deeds. They were grieved because they did not have the wealth as the other rich Sahaba had. However, on the contrary, if the evil person is the one who is intending to do evil things with wealth that he or she does not have, then the sin is going to be on them, particularly if they are immersed in that idea or thought. If it's just a fleeting thought, if it's just something which is just passing by, or they're not contemplating or great desire to do so, then inshallah, it will not be a sin on them. So we have to also control our desires and also not think and be indulging or contemplating evil for long periods as well. Furthermore, if a person has an intention of performing an evil act but later refrains from doing so for fear of the people or their blame, then he will also incur a sin on his part. And this is because their fear, the person's fear of people is more than the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that alone, they are sinful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, This is only shaitan who frightens you of his supporters. So fear them not, but fear me, if you are believers. Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 171. So now turning to the next topic, which is actions of the heart. Okay. So what are the actions of the heart? So these include those which are directly related to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or aqidah. Okay. For example, the articles of faith as well. Thus, to have an evil or incorrect opinion or doubt on his aqidah, belief in Allah, belief in the prophets, is a great sin. And depending on how great is this doubt, it can be kufr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُرِدْ فِيهِ بِإِلْحَادٍ بِظُلْمٍ نُذِقُهُ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And whoever intends therein deviation in religion or wrongdoings, Allah, we will make him taste of a painful punishment. This is in Surah Hajj, Ayah 25. And furthermore, according to Ibn Rajab, there are other sins related to the heart that incur sin, such as, for example, loving that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates or hating that which Allah loves. And furthermore, we have arrogance, we have envy, we have suspicion for no valid reason. All these things incur sin on the heart. These are actions of the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us a remedy for any evil that slips into the heart, whether it's big or small. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Araf, 
ayah 200. And if an evil suggestion comes to you from shaitan, then seek refuge in Allah. Fasta'id billah. Indeed, he is hearing and knowing. Okay, so we have the solution to making sure to clean ourselves regularly from any evil thought, any evil thought which comes into our hearts or minds. We say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. A'udhu billah. We seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan. Because this is from the source of the evil. Okay, and this Also by doing this, evil thoughts are minimized and prevented from nesting in our hearts. Very important and essential, particularly in today's time and age. Furthermore, let's go to the next topic where an evil action can be omitted. So Imam al nawi he himself comments on the deep meaning of the hadith directly after the matan. He states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses the word one wahidan instead of the word kamila after mentioning sin. Okay. And for a good deed, however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the word kamila which refers to completion. Okay. So thus for evil deeds, there is still room left open for the sin to be forgiven and removed as opposed to the good deed which is kamila, complete, it's a done deal. Okay. Well, this denotes the generosity and again the forgiveness of Allah from this hadith and we know the importance of Tawbah already from previous hadith which completely wipe away sins as well. Another thing which omits sin is a good deed and we've looked at that in previous hadith where Rasulullah says اِتَّقَ wa كُنْتْ وَعَطْبَ سَيَّةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا وَخَالِكِ نَاسًا بِخُولِكَ الْحَسَنَةَ Fear Allah wherever you may be and follow up an, e an evil deed with a good deed which will wipe it out. تَمْحُوهَا And behave with excellence towards the people. The burden of sins. Okay. So there are sins committed that are not easily omitted. Okay. This is especially the case for sins that involve infringing on the rights of others. Ibn Masud He said, Woe to the one whose one sin outweighs his ten good deeds. The Prophet وسلم, also said to his companions, Atadruna mal muflis? Do you know who is the bankrupt person? Qalu, they said, Al-Muflisu fina man la dirhama lahu wa la mata. They, the companions said, a bankrupt person amongst us is the one who has neither dirham nor wealth. Okay. Then, Faqal, then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna al-Muflisa min ummati ya'ti yawm al-qiyamata bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin wa ya'ti qad shatama hada wa qatafa hada wa akala maala hada wa safaka dama hada wa daraba hada fa yu'ta hada min hasanatihi fa in faniyat hasanatuhu qabla ay yuqda ma alayh ukhida min khatayahum fa turihat alayhi thumma turiha fin nao then the prophet so sallam said the bankrupt of my ummah would be the one who would come on the day of judgment with salah and fasting and zakah, but since he hurled abuses upon others, brought calumny or slander against others, and unlawfully consumed the wealth of others, and shed the blood of others, and beat others, and his virtues would be credited to the account of the one who suffered at his hand. And if his good deeds fall short to clear the account, then his sins would be entered into his account, and he would be thrown into the hellfire. And this is near Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim. But well, this is a scary hadith which tells us that don't just be content with knowing that you have so many good deeds. But if you are harming others and just looking the other way while transgressing the rights of others, it will come to haunt you. Okay, and this is the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So in this case, the bad deeds are not easily omitted because they are related to the rights of others. And this person may wrong others by slander, backbiting, cheating, assaulting, etc. And as a result, his good deeds will be taken away from him in the hereafter as a matter of justice, as haq, which can cause him to be thrown again into Jahannam. Imagine how unfortunate this situation is for the bankrupt person. We need to ponder and reflect on this hadith and ensure that we do not wrong, belittle, or fail others. Okay. 
So thus, we need to be careful when it comes to the dealings with other people. Unless we seek forgiveness from those we wrong, then we will be held responsible for our wrongdoings that we commit against others. And this has to do with, again, our akhlaq also and values as Muslims. If you don't have the proper akhlaq and the proper values, then we are liable to also wrong others as well. So going forward, this hadith gives a general rule that an evil deed committed comes as a single sin. And for example, no more opposed to a good deed. But however, remember that this is a general rule. There are some exceptions. As a sin can sometimes be considered greater due to various reasons or contexts. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah An-Kabut, but they will surely carry their own burdens and other burdens along with their burdens. And they will surely be questioned on the Day of Judgment about what they used to invent. Okay. So as per Ibn Kathir, these people also carry the sin of others due to calling others to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be misguided and they will yield the evil that they intended for others. Continuing, so sins also are variable. And there are certain sanctified places where a sin is greater in evil. Okay, for example, with regards to the honor of Makkah, Mukarrama, or Madina to Munawwara, is repeated, for example, in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 25. And due to this verse, some of the companions of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu used to avoid doing certain actions in Makkah. And furthermore, there are certain dates or periods of time where sins are more weighty. For example, there are the four sacred months in Islam, and these are Muharram, the first month, Rajab, the seventh, Dhul Qadah, the eleventh, and Dhul Hijjah, the twelfth. Okay. Surah Tawbah, Ayah 36, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of these four sanctified months. Another criteria for sins is to be regarded as greater is the nobility of the person who commits the sin. So for example, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were warned about receiving twice the punishment for a shameful act as their status was above other Muslim women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya O wives of the Prophet, whoever of you should commit a clear immorality, for her the punishment will be double twofold. And ever is that for Allah easy. Surah Al Ahzab, Ayah 30. So when a person with knowledge of Allah who is righteous, and is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, and is close to Allah, and he were to commit any sin, then his sin or her sin would be regarded as greater than that of an ordinary Muslim. Furthermore, sin coming from a righteous Muslim, who is a role model, authority, and a teacher of the community, can certainly be very demoralizing for the community, even if the sin is a small one. So we have to be careful as well, particularly as leaders and examples, for our kids, for our children, for our community as well. So context of the sin also is different as well. Okay. And we have to be very careful with sin, as we see in this hadith, the deep interpretation in terms of what's near, what's intention, highlights from this hadith. But this hadith exemplifies the great vastness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He multiplies good deeds up to 700 times and forgives whomever he wishes. And after all the chances and opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, if our bad deeds outweigh our good deeds in the end, then we certainly are big sinners and transgressors. We have nobody to blame but ourselves since this evil result came as a result of our persistence in disobedience and committing evil actions without many righteous actions. And the explanation of this hadith also elaborates on the importance of intention in our hearts as we have so in depth discussed. So it is important to repel the evil transient thoughts such as the khawatir or the waswas that enter the hearts that we cannot control. Just say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. And this is because to allow evil ideas and thoughts to stay in the heart and fester can be sinful and can cause our whole 
heart to be set on evil. Okay? And this occurs because if this evil becomes set in the heart, then it causes the termination of the evil deed. And thus we need to have taqwa to protect our hearts from these evil desires and ideas and have be constantly in the dhikr of Allah, in the remembrance of Allah, and also contemplate good deeds to increase our elevation. Furthermore, it is important to remember that the thoughts such as having doubts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or about the tenets of belief or about the sharia can lead to kufr and push us outside the religion altogether. This highlights the importance of doing is the adha and dhikr which repel these evil thoughts and doubts the true religion of your in alhamdulillah. Well, this hadith altogether, putting everything into perspective, is a great encouragement for us to strive to do good deeds even if they be small. However, at the same time, we should not get apathetic with respect to evil deeds and should protect ourselves from them at all times, especially from the major sins, the sins of the heart, and the sins that involve transgression of the rights of others. And these are the sins that can easily bankrupt the believer of his or her vast deeds and can cause an evil ending. Okay. So Jazakallah khairan for your attendance and May Allah give us tawfiq to apply this hadith and to give us more wisdoms and to, to give us depth of our iman. Subhanaka Allahum wa hamdik wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant wa sakfa kutubu wa alaykum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.